Okay, AB calculus at AB, unit one, review, corrective. This is, these are the answers, this is the graphing calculus portion. So you can check your answers uh, first. Um, pause the video if you need to. Check them more closely, move it up. And there you go, those are all the answers. So check them, pause the video if you need to. All right, <clears throat> so let's do these. Uh, graphing character part was definitely a challenge for some people. It was only worth 20 points, but still, test points are gold. So I want to take advantage of as much as possible. First one, I'm just typing this in. I think most people did pretty well on a problem like this. Um, so you just want to make sure you put parentheses in the right places. We want three decimal accuracy, rounded or truncated for all answers and so let's see so i think we probably should put parentheses around two-thirds and parentheses around the numerator for sure five plus 20 to the one fourth power now i this that's the way i like to do it you probably find a fourth root somewhere it's 20 to the one fourth uh, radicals roots are ra are just exponents that are fractions. You can raise it to the 0.25 if you want. Now, if you raise the one fourth, you better put parentheses around the one fourth. Otherwise, it just raises to the first and divides the answer by four. It's not what you want. Close parentheses on top, divided by definitely need parentheses on the bottom one minus two. Now you could do e squared a lot of different ways. You could do e there squared, or you do the other e button. And use it. just lots of ways. So make sure you're in radium mode for this. I, I don't think there's any trick on this. If there was, it'd make a difference, but that's your answer. So negative 0 0.344 rounded or truncated three decimal place comes out the same this time. Okay, then we're gonna try, try and find the minimum of this graph. So we're gonna get a y, enter this in, two x to the third minus 10 x squared minus 20 x plus 40. You always want to go to window before you graph. Um, it says zero to 10. So window, we could probably say zero to 10. We could try zoom fit. That might make the graph really big though. So zoom zero would be the shortcut if you just hit zero, it selects zoom of that. So really big graph. You can tell how dense this is. Now, I mean, we can do a rough sketch of this. <laughs> I do want rough sketches to get full credit. So, you know, something like this, right? Now, I might indicate that, so zero to 10. So, I mean, the minimum would be like right here, whatever that value is, that's minimum. So let's find that right on the graph and then write our final answer in the best way. So on your graph, we're gonna go second trace calculate, number three, minimum. You gotta tell it where to look for it. So it looks like it's, I mean, you get to the left of it, enter, get to the right of it, and then you can see these little arrows up here. And then we can guess somewhere in between. It's kind of annoying it's at the bottom of the screen. I mean, it looks like it's one, two, three, four ish. So I probably would have done like a three to five guess four if I had started already. So the answer is. 4.138733 comma negative 72.28014. Now that's what I want for your work. So your answer is going to be, and you would write in the answer column, but I'm just going to write over here just to, so I can zoom in closer. Or I don't know, it's fine. We could write over here. We could say the maximum, or sorry, the minimum is negative 72.280, I'd write the zero, at x equals 4.138, and I guess we could do 4.139. Either way, I tend to just truncate because it's hard to mess up. It's easier to think about too. So that's your answer. Do not write the coordinates. If you write 4.138, I'm a negative 72.280, nope. And that's the way it's gonna be great on the AP test. That's what I'm doing here. Find all the intersection points of these two graphs. 
Now we could graph them. I have an idea that might be better. So 2x cubed minus 10x squared minus 20x plus 40. Okay, the same one. That's nice. And the next one's going to be negative x squared plus 6x. And it's it's everywhere. So window might be better to go negative 10, 10. And this is a really big graph, so you might want to zoom in. But let's just try and graph it real quick with the way it was before. So it's crazy big graph. That's the first graph. It's cubic, which makes sense. And then this is going to be an upside, or this going to be an upside down parabola, which you can see right there. So I feel like we could <clears throat> definitely get much closer to what's going on. So maybe window. I think we do negative five. And then <clears throat> probably like a hundred. Let's just try that. And it's worth it just to try this a couple times. So there's a cubic. We can see all of it. And there's the parabola. So there's an answer. One, two, three answers. And this is a parabola, so it's going to go down forever. This is a cubic. If you if you know the basic shapes of the graph, it's definitely going to help. So I'm going to draw a quick sketch of this. On your test, you have more room to draw sketches. but So we have a cubic that's kind of going like that. And then we have a parabola that's kind of going like that. And our answers are here, here, and here. So let's see if we can find those intersections. So we can do um, second calc, number five intersect, first curve, second curve. There's only two curves. Let's guess this one. Let's work left, right. Negative three is going to be my guess. That's way faster than trying to hit the cursor over. So let's write that on our graph. Negative 2.776509 comma negative 24.36805. Okay, second so calculate number five, first curve, second curve. Let's guess one. Okay. This is 1.1819148 comma 5.6945661. And then we got one more. <clears throat> second calculate, number five intersect, first curve, second curve. One, two, three, four, five, six. It looks like it would be a good guess. That's way faster. Okay. 6.094594 comma negative 0 0.5765122. So my answers are going to be these are actual intersection points. That means they're ordered pairs, x and y coordinates. In parentheses, not interval notation. So it's going to be negative 2.776 comma negative 24.368. You could do negative 2.777, I think. The next one is going to be 1.181, 5.694. Now, if you did round, it would be 1.182 and 5.695. The next one is going to be 6.094, comma, negative 0 0.576. You could round those 6.095 and negative 0 0.577. But there's your answers. <clears throat> now, just to throw something interesting at you, and in the future I think this will actually be better. These graphs weren't too bad, but it was getting a little crazy. And here's a way to make it easier. When, you, when you're trying to find where these intersect, you're really setting the equations equal to each other. <clears throat> So if you were to do that, you'd say, okay, two, if you're trying to solve this by hand, you'd set the equations equal. 2x cubed minus 10x squared minus 20x plus 40 equals negative x squared plus 6x, and then you'd solve this. Now, if you were to solve this by hand, you'd move everything to one side equals zero. You do 2x cubed plus actually minus 9x squared minus 26x plus 40 equals zero. Now, on your graphing calculator, that would actually be pretty easy to do because we just want to find the x-intercepts of this graph. So instead of doing these two graphs and trying to figure out where they intersect, you could do this one and then and, and then say, you can even do this, uh, plus x 
squared minus 6x. So I subtract the second one from the first one. And then the window, um, we don't really need to see the whole graph because we just want to see its x-intercept. So that makes it a lot easier. I'm just going to look for negative 1 to 1. I just want to see the x-axis. And maybe you don't know where it's going to graph. So you start with negative 10 to 10 and you graph it. And it's just one graph. And you don't see the whole rest graph. But there's an answer. There's an answer. There's an answer. Now guess what? Guess what? Well, there's one drawback to this. Because this is only going to give you the x-coordinates. So you'd still have to find the y-coordinates. So I probably wouldn't do this. But if you, all you're looking for is the x-coordinates, which sometimes you are, so I can count 0. And it looks like there's... Let's see, there's one around uh, I mean, negative 3, so you say, all right, negative 4 to negative 2, I guess negative 3. And uh, look, it's the same x-coordinate. Now, you still need the y-coordinate, so maybe this wouldn't be a great choice here. But it's just an interesting thing of solving equations in your calculator. Solve graphically for the values. Okay, now this, I would definitely move everything to one side compared to 0. You don't have to, but... Just like I was saying, it's a lot easier to just graph one graph. So I would just say, all right, x to the third minus 7x minus 2. And uh, it's, a, it's an inequality. So we're going to say, where is this graph above the x-axis? Now, window, I'm not sure. It's a, it's a cubic. This is a cubic. So, you know, when we see it, it should hopefully makes sense and if not we could zoom out or zoom in or something it's a cubic oh, that's pretty good it's pretty good i mean we could change the window like negative five to five get a little closer view of it seems pretty good so let's draw a sketch of that it's cubic like we expect and it kind of looks like this so quick sketch. Now, <clears throat> because we move everything on one side, it's just one graph, and is it, where is this graph above zero? So that would be a solid dot at any x-intercept, right? Because or equal to zero, and it'd be what's above. So it's that chunk of the graph and this chunk of the graph. Now watch out if there's any domain restrictions. Don't give answers outside the domain, but now we just need to find those x-intercepts. So I can calc, number two, zero. Looks like it's going around negative 2.5. So I'm going to say negative 3 to negative 2. I guess negative 2.5. And that's going to be negative 2.489289, 0. Okay. Second, calculate 0. Looks like negative 0.5-ish. Negative 1 to 0. I guess negative 0.5. Write that one down, negative 0 0.289168, 0. Last one. Second so calculate, number 2, 0. And it looks like it's close to 3, so let's say 2 to 4, guess 3. And it's blinking where we thought it would be, 2.778457 very good throw graph. Now the answer is uh, it's an interval notation. So we got to say negative 2.489 comma zero negative 0 0.289 brackets union bracket 2.778 comma positive infinity <clears throat> bracket on the numbers because it's or equals to they're solid dots. And it keeps going forever to the right. Now, if there was some restriction, you know, like this next one, 0 to 10, then you got to break it up and stop at 10. But there wasn't this time. Okay, find all the intervals where this graph is less than 0. So they're giving you one graph. And we're going to graph it and see where it's below the x-axis. So we got to enter it in correctly first. So that's an absolute value. Math, num, ABS on my calculator. x squared minus 7. Close the absolute values. Divided by parentheses, x squared minus 16. You've got to put parentheses around that denominator. And then there's a plus 0.2. Now the window, we're going to say 0 to 10. We just want 0 to 10. And where is it below the x-axis? Um, now, before I even get there, let's start to graph this. This is going to have x equals plus or minus 4. Vertical asymptotes there. Right? And then 
Yeah, definitely a vertical awesome tensor. So if I were to start to do a sketch, it's going to help because some of you guys, one, two, three, four, so vertical asymptote, one, two, three, four, vertical asymptote at x equals negative four. Those are probably going to be places where we break up our answers. Um, uh, and as x gets really big, this goes to one. Million squared minus seven is like a million squared. Million squared minus six is like a million squared. Million squared million squared is pretty much one plus that. So uh, it's going to be a vertical asymptote. Y equals uh, 1.2. That's a good start. So that when we graph this, let me just start with this. Now, maybe I want to see the whole graph just to see this other stuff. So I'm going to start with neg 10, 10, neg 10, 10. Let's just try it out. Let's stay in a window. So boom, vertical asymptote, boom, vertical asymptote, totally predictable. Now, <clears throat> what we need to watch out for is what is going on here? Does it actually, does it touch the x-axis? Does it cross it a little bit? So I think we want to we want to see a little closer to that. So we could say window, I mean, we could try negative two to two. Let's just see what that does. Oh, I did the wrong thing. I was doing negative 10 to 10. 10, 10, oh, the Y values, negative two to two. Let's try that. So those, those, oh, look, it looks like it goes over and over, right? Now it might be, now, so for my sketch, I'm gonna be like, okay, well, it kind of goes like, goes over it. It goes over it again. So we need to figure out what those values are now. So less than or equal zero. So these are going to be solid dots, right? Solid dots, solid dots, less than or equal to zero. So it's got to be this chunk of the graph, this chunk of the graph, and this chunk of the graph. We got to figure out what these x intercepts are. Now, it might be good to have a little closer view of them because you're trying to pick them left and right bounds and they're really close to each other. This can make it harder. So I think let's change our window to negative four to four, negative one to one. It's a little better, right? I mean, we could make it even better. Let's, let's say window uh, negative 0.5 to 0.5. So we got to find these x-intercepts. So second calc zero looks like it's running negative three. So let's say a negative three point five to negative two point five. Guess negative two. Oh shoot, it didn't like that. Uh, second calc zero. So negative three point five to negative two point five. Guess negative three. See, my guess wasn't between my points. So that is negative 2.915476, zero. This graph's gonna be a little tight. How much you, I, I kinda wanna bet, I feel like this guy over here is probably positive 2.915476. So I can calc, so I can calc zero. This one looks around like negative three. So we say negative three point five to negative two point five. Nope, that's not what I want to do. Negative two point five to negative one point five. Guess negative two. Okay, so this one is negative two point one seven nine four four nine comma zero, and then this guy. So we can calc zero. It looks like it's around two, so I'm going to say 1.5 to 2.5. Guess two. 2.1794495 comma zero, and then that one. So I can calc zero. Looks like it's around three, so I'm going to say 2.5 to 3.5. Guess three. And it is 2.9154759 comma zero. Okay, so the intervals, the answer is going to be 
um, negative four, because there's a vertical asymptote out there, comma negative 2.915 bracket union bracket negative 2.179 comma 2.179 round truncate is coming out the same this time union bracket 2.915 comma positive 4 parenthesis because the, the function can't actually exist at a vertical asymptote Okay, that was a bit of work. Okay, uh, y equals 3 over x. Find the area bounded by the coordinate axis and the tangent line to the curve. So I think we did something like this on some of the review assignments before. So 3 over x, I mean, you guys should, I think, be able to graph that. It has a very basic rational function. It has a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. If you plug in really big numbers, it goes to y equals 0. If you plug in a positive, it's like this, you plug in negatives like this. So, I mean, it seems like all right, you could always graph it on your calculator. 3 over x, window negative 10 to 10, negative 10 to 10. Always check your window. It's usually not going to be helpful to do the exact same thing from the last part. <clears throat> There's a graph, totally predictable. Okay, so we want to draw a tangent line at x equals 2. So let's say that's like here, and that's here, and the area between the tangent line and the coordinate axis is triangle. So we got to find the equation of this tangent line. So it's at 2 comma 3 halves. Easiest way is to let your calculator do it. Second program draw, number 5, tangent line. Tell it at x equals 2, and it will graph it and tell you the equation line. Pretty quick and easy. So draw it on here, label it y equals negative 0 0.75000x plus 3.00000. Now, if you want to do math with this, which we might, you want to then enter it into your y menu. Uh, negative, should be a negative slope by the way, right? 0.75x plus three. I'm writing all the zeros here to communicate my desire of accuracy, but my calculator, it doesn't care. You graph it again. You're not going to see a difference because graph right on top of the other graph. So now you can use this to find, like if you want to find the area of this triangle, the area of this, you could do the area of triangle one half based on its height. So you got to find the, the height. So y intercept 3.00000, and then the x intercept you could do it. You could set this to zero and solve for x. I think it's gonna be like four. You could go in here and do second calculate zero. Now you got to make sure you're on the correct graph. Tell it where to look for it. You're like, well, it looks like it's around four. So we can say three to five. Guess four, and it's four. Four point zero zero zero. Okay. So the base is. 4.00000. The height is 3.00000. If you multiply this, you're going to get 6.000. And I'd write the extra zeros because you're not writing the nearest whole number, are you? <coughs> it says what we want it to do. The other option is you could integrate from left starting at 0, meaning at 4. And then you got to write the equation line, negative 0 0.75000x plus 3.00000. dx, you should put parentheses around this because there's multiple terms inside. You need the dx. This is the setup. So if you're doing this, either way, I got to see your work. I, I got to know how you're doing it. So we do second calc number seven. And again, you want to make sure you're selecting the right function. I don't want to I don't want to integrate 3 over x. I want to integrate the line. And you type the limits in 0 to 4 shades. It gives you a value of 6.000. 3 decimal actually round and truncated. So you can do it like that. You can do it like that. But you definitely need the equation of the tangent. Now, there's other ways you can find the equation of the tangent line. You already have points, all you need is a slope. So if you want to, you could do dy dx at x equals 2. You could do that on the graph screen. You could say second calculate dy dx 
<clears throat> and you want to do it on the three over x line, so you can say yeah, I want x equals two. It gives you negative zero point seven five zero 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 two. So that's your slope, and you have a point. So you can do point slope form y minus three halves equals negative zero point seven five zero 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 two x minus 2. Do not round truncate to three decimal places in the middle of your work. Your limits, your equations, it will throw your answers off a little bit. Enough for me to not give you full credit. So then of course you could change this to uh, slope intercept form to graph it or whatever. So um, it's going to be 2 times point Seven five zero 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 two plus one point five. You get the equation of the line that way, but yeah, I would just let my calculator. Now, f average is this idea I was talking about before that, like, if you have a graph, you want to find the average height of it. That's what f average is. Now, the way we do it is you say, okay, well, let's find the area underneath it. Let's smooth it out. It's going to be like a rectangle. Same area though, right? Same area as what was under the curve before, just leveled out. It's a rectangle though, and uh, this is the base. And the height of the rectangles is f average. So if you could find the, the area of the rectangle, which is the area of the curve from 2 to 7, right? That would give you the area of the rectangle, and then if you divide it by the base, which would be 7 minus 2, that gives you f average, it gives you the height. So f average equals 1 over 7 minus 2 of 2 is 7 of x squared plus 10 dx. That's how you do it. Find the area of the curve, think of it as a rectangle, divide by the base of the rectangle, get the height. So my calculator, we could find this. Um, you know, we could do it from this screen or you could do it from the home screen, x squared plus 10. Uh, if you do it here, you got to graph it though. So window, I mean, it says two to seven, so we could do two to seven and we could do zoom fit, zoom zero, it takes a little bit more time. Here's the graph. Let me go back to window. I'd like to see the bottom. So there's a little more. So we do uh, second calc, number seven, number two to seven, shade it all in, gives you a value. 161.66667. Do not round or truncate to three decimal places until you're done, done. But check this out. We can say divided by five, and it takes you to the home screen, divides your answer from previous. Five thirty-two point three 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 three. So the final answer is thirty-two point three three three. Round truncate comes out the same. Do not say thirty-two and one third. That is not exactly what your calculator probably gave you. It wasn't perfect. Okay. The other way to do it is from the home screen. You could do math nine. You go select it, math 9, or you could type it in here. You could say x squared plus 10, comma x, comma 2, comma 7. So this is how you could integrate too, which is a little faster because you don't have to graph, but we just got the same number, 161. Don't forget the divided by 5. <clears throat> okay, well, that was some good practice. Make sure you're ready for the retest and let's let's get as many points as we can.